As you all know, I've bought plenty of mechanical disasters on four wheels before, but none have come close to the final repair bill on this, my 1982 DeLorean DMC-12. My Ferrari 355, for example, that I bought non-running cost way less to fix than this. Same goes for my 2007 BMW M5, that is the most unreliable BMW ever, uh, cost way less to fix than this. And even my 2007 Mercedes S600 with a bad engine cost less to fix than this simple little DeLorean. But now, nine months in and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars later, this DeLorean is finally sorted. And is it worth it? So back last December, I bought the cheapest DeLorean in the USA by mistake. It was at a collector car auction and I was the high bidder at $14,000. I went there with no intention of buying a DeLorean, but saw it and went, ooh, pretty, and ended up bringing it home. I'm not a fan of buying at collector car auctions usually because you can't test drive the cars before. It often is a dumping ground for mechanical basket cases like this, and the fees are Ridiculous, ridiculous. This thing was $14,000, but after fees and transportation, it was almost $16,000 to my door. So this DeLorean is a prime example of why you shouldn't buy from those fancy collector car auctions. It was expensive and it was a mess. Well, maybe it wasn't that expensive. It did run and drive across the auction block, but when I got it home, I realized how many issues it had and the transmission actually barely worked at all. We managed to get it going kind of by dropping the pan, replacing the fluid and the filter, but still the transmission was trash. But if I had just done that and made the car drivable at $16,000, I probably could have sold this thing for a decent profit because it is in beautiful condition. The stainless steel body can't hide any flaws. There's no way to bond to it and paint over naked stainless steel. And it is beautiful in the interior. While it does have some normal wear, it's original and in very nice condition. In hindsight, it probably would have been a good idea to flip this thing for a decent little profit, but I have the business sense of Mike Tyson. Although instead of buying pet tigers and golden bathtubs, I buy broken hoopties and spend way too much money fixing them and somehow think making videos about it is justification for making bad decisions. Just in recent memory, it certainly wasn't the best idea for me to spend almost $5,000 fixing a Mercedes station wagon with over 200,000 miles or fixing the worst BMW ever made, a 2007 BMW M5, uh, buying it in the first place with a bad SMG transmission, then spending $6,000 fixing it, or spending $10,000 on my old Mercedes S600 that had a bad motor and was in a thousand pieces. Why did I buy that? I don't know, but this DeLorean, this DeLorean, it beats all of them, all of them. And when I say beat them, it comes with an asterisk because it doesn't quite beat the LS swapping on my Porsche 911 that I did after I blew the engine. I decided it was a good idea to swap in an LS V8. That was really, really dumb. I spent $17,000 on that, but that was more of a transformation rather than a restoration. Also, my Acura NSX, I spent a lot of money on it, but a lot of it was on pimp my ride style improvements that were really stupid and, and not as much on the repairs. Well, as much as I enjoy this trip down failure lane. Let's get back to the DeLorean where I'll now explain how I've spent almost $13,000 fixing it. $13,000. What? Way back at the beginning of the year, I had my mechanic address the obvious needs with his DeLorean, like replacing the dying transmission and reviving the dying brakes and starting the process of going through the dying fuel system. I also had him address numerous other issues like a bunch of leaks coming from the engine bay, the doors they wouldn't pop up and sometimes when you would close them they would jam themselves shut and the speedometer cable had been ripped out of its place and was just dangling on the ground. This first round of repairs cost three thousand dollars and after that I still had an undrivable mess. Oh this engine, it still wasn't running right, still it just wouldn't cold start at all. It took a lot of cranking for it to start and it would sputter on any kind of hard load, any acceleration. Also, the exhaust, it sounded like garbage. It had some aftermarket homemade system that just, it just was awful, so I had to fix that. The brakes, while malfunctional, when I hit the brakes, it would pull hard to the right, which was quite dangerous, and it had a rather alarming steering clunk. I had Wizard fix all of these problems and then brought it home and said it was fixed. I made a video saying it's fixed and here's how much it costs, but really I was nowhere close. It was still a mess, still, still a total mess. 
While this DeLorean did run and drive under its own power reliably enough, cold starting was still a big issue and it needed a long time to warm up to stop sputtering. Additionally, as it started warming up outside, these little itty bitty windows in the doors weren't enough for air ventilation, so I had to revive the AC. A new leak had popped up from the engine as well and the battery decided to die. This bill was the smallest of the repair runs. It was only $1,400 as opposed to the first one that was $3,000 and the second one that was $5,000. So not that bad, but I got it back and it was still a mess. I got home with the DeLorean and the AC immediately blew up on me. The line had burst and it sent toxic gases out into the garage and it had me coughing harder than a vaping addict. And additionally, the car would still not cold start. It needed lots and lots of cranking to cold start. And at this point, I had spent almost $10,000 on this DeLorean. I, I was so disgusted that I just put it away. It mostly sat for five months because I was just so mad at it. I hated it. I considered dumping it at this point because it was so frustrating. Even Tavares had some interest in buying it and LS swapping it or doing something. But after a while I decided, okay, one more shot at the car wizard to sort this thing out. And finally, finally, it works. With some more fuel bits and a new AC line and a few other little things, it starts right up now, $2,500 later. I have a sorted DeLorean. I couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm $29,000 into it now, but I have a sorted DeLorean. That number, $29,000, is probably more than this thing is worth right now. It's certainly more than what it sold for new, which was $24,000, or probably way less than that. I think they were advertising it for $14,000 by the time the company was bankrupt. Okay, let's go. Come on. <laughs> so, what does my $29,000 get me? Well, uh, heavy stainless steel panels mounted to a flimsy fiberglass body, and this is all powered by a 130 horsepower Hujo V6. Yikes. Inside I'm treated to an interior that's made of a lot of hard plastic and it's held together by plywood. Literally plywood. Yeah, and I'm launched to 60 in this thing in about 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Horrible. Even now that it's sorted, this thing is still a mess because that's how it was built. That's how it came out of the factory brand new. So you could chalk this DeLorean up to another long list of failures. I mean, just looking at this car logically, it, it, it's a mess and not worth all the trouble. It was built in Northern Ireland by really inexperienced people, so DeLorean could get a big tax break. And it's reported that he cut corners in the engineering so he could pocket more money for himself. Many people argue that without the movie, this thing wouldn't have nearly the cult following that it has. The people wouldn't love it. It'd just be dismissed as another failure. And a week ago, when this thing was still broken and it cost me so much money and it was still broken, I probably would have agreed with them. But, but not now. Not now. Out of all the cars in my garage, I find myself spending the most time just sitting and staring at the DeLorean more than any of the others. And it's not just because of the beautiful naked stainless steel body and the gold wing doors. The DeLorean is just beautiful from every angle, every crease, every angle you can look at this thing, it's just stunningly gorgeous. And that's because it's Italian design. Famed designer Giagiaro created this masterpiece of design and the finished product, unlike a lot of concept cars and drawings, stayed really true to his original concept. That's why it's just so pretty. It's pretty. Woo! So, admittedly, this DeLorean is not fast by any means. It was marketed as a sports car, but it's not a sports car, and, and that's okay. Really, this thing is kind of a nice compromise between a grand touring car and a land yacht. It has a lot of the qualities of a proper classic European grand touring car, 
but still a soft, comfortable seat, a spacious interior, and a pretty nice ride like an old American land yacht. I find myself really comfortable in this thing and I didn't expect that because the interior is so spacious and it actually has quite a bit of storage and trunk space to where you could take a long trip in this thing and be really comfortable. Usually buying a car with fancy doors like this or a really exotic design comes with a lot of compromises in the comfort or the visibility and that's not the case with the DeLorean. It's, it's just it's just a nice, albeit very slow, drive. It, it's nice. So I never thought I would enjoy driving this DeLorean just as much as I do looking at it, but I do. And unlike a lot of projects that I've had where I can't wait to get rid of them once they're finished, I find myself really wanting to hang on to this DeLorean. I really like it, even though it is a mechanical basket case and may have me following John DeLorean into bankruptcy and making cocaine brokering deals or whatever to, to keep it running. Hopefully not. Thank you for watching.